Okay, so welcome to another session on concepts of classification of organisms for the first semester BSc Zoology program. And in this session, we'll be dealing with the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, uh, the rules uh, actually followed for the zoological nomenclature. The International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, the hard copy is uh, the picture of the uh, cover pages like this. And it contains, the book contains three major sections uh, named as co Code Proper, Appendices and Glossary. Code proper, it includes preamble and the articles. The preamble, it is an introductory part explaining the importance of the code. The articles, uh, it includes the mandatory rules. Okay, here there is no, um, in, in, the, uh, in this specific section, uh, the rules are not explained. It is just recommendations to the rules and the rules are listed. Uh, the second section is about the appendices and there are three appendices, appendix A and appendix B. Uh, then third, the constitution of the ICZN. Uh, the appendix A and appendix B, uh, appendix A is about code of ethics and uh, appendix uh, B includes the general recommendations. The third uh, section under appendices it is about the constitution of the ICZ. The third section major section is glossary which lists all the terms used in the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature and gives the definition for each of the uh, term used. Okay so these three major sections include the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. Right now what are the principles or rules uh, of nomenclature as per the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature? Okay, the first one obviously which is more uh, very famous it is a principle of binomial nomenclature which states that the nomenclature should include uh, should be binomial with two words and the two words should be latin or at least greek and if the name is uh, taken from any other language it has to be latinized okay so that is the uh, binomial nomenclature and it includes the generic name and the specific name the uh, names when it is uh, uh, printed it should be in uh, italics and when it is handwritten it should be underlined the uh, 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 even trinomial nomenclature is also accepted here the trinomial nomenclature is used when the subspecies is to be named okay otherwise it is binomial nomenclature the next one is the principle of typification and uh, here it says that each nominal taxon in the family group genus group or the species group has actually or potentially a name bearing type okay what does it mean is every um, organism when it is named it is based upon a per specific specimen a particular specimen okay and that specimen is referred as a type okay so uh, when it is being named that uh, specimen becomes a name bearing type i hope it is clear so whether it is a genus group or a species group or a family group, it is always associated with a type specimen. Okay, so that is a typification. And the uh, type specimen which is uh, upon which the first publication or the first naming is being based on, it is known as a holotype. Okay, holotype, H-O-L-O-T-Y-P-E. Holotype is actually the uh, specimen or the type specimen which is used for describing and naming a particular species or any other taxon for the first time okay so for example if a, a person if a scientist is working on uh, just imagine mangifera indica uh, or a, a new species okay a new specimen on insects obviously the a single specimen is used for describing all the structural features upon which the particular name is name was given so that particular specimen becomes a name bearing type okay or it is otherwise known as the holotype because that was a specimen uh, for which the name was given for the first time okay that is a holotype so that is what the principle of typification referred to okay now this third one is principle of priority principle of priority according to this um, a valid name of a taxon is the oldest available name applied to it okay it has been come into force in uh, on january 1st 1758 that is uh, after the like uh, date of publication of uh, uh, carolus linnaeus uh, systema naturae the 10th edition of systema naturae was published uh, in 1758 and this particular pr uh, principle has come into being or come into force 
uh, effective from 1758. Okay, so what does this actually refer to? Let the prior name prevail. That is what the tag word is for the principle of priority. Okay, if a, uh, a particular taxon uh, bears two or more names assigned to it by different workers, uh, obviously the first published name will be the valid name. Okay, I hope it is clear. If a particular uh, uh, taxon, for example, a particular species has been given different names by different authors, obviously among the, those names, the first published name is considered to be the valid name for that particular species. Okay, all other names, the rest of the names are considered to be synonyms. Okay, they are known as synonyms. All the later names given to the particular taxon, they are known as synonyms. Okay, synonym. Fine. So, the principle of priority, it states that uh, if, uh, there are, if there are two or more names assigned to the same taxon by different workers, the valid name will be the first published name. Okay, uh, any name which is published before 1758 uh, doesn't come under the principle of priority. Okay, all the names are all the uh, pub, uh, names published after 1758 comes under the principle of priority. Okay, so uh, it is the prior name prevail. The next one is principle of synonymy. So as already indicated that if a taxon is given two or more names, the first name is the valid name for the particular taxon. The later names are considered to be synonyms. Okay, now what is synonym? Okay, a principle of that is one taxon can have only one name. That is a unique. Uh, we have already mentioned that the requir requirements of nomenclature is that it should be unique. So, uh, so a, a taxon should have only one name. If there are more names, that is what is re referred as synonyms. Okay, so synonyms are different names for the same taxon, and the first name, the valid name, uh, it is re first published name. That is a valid name and that is referred as the senior, okay, yeah, yeah, senior synonym, okay. This is actually the first published name for the particular species, okay. Uh, and the later names are referred as junior synonyms. So, there will be only one senior synonym but there, will be, there can be many junior synonyms, okay. This is one example for uh, the pest of uh, uh, rice. It is a stored grain pest. Okay, Cytophilus oryzae. Okay, so Cytophilus oryzae. And this, this, this particular name was uh, given by Linnaeus uh, uh, in uh, like uh, 1700s. Uh, mm -hmm. It is Cytophilus oryzae. But later, the same species was given another name by Linnaeus. It was Calandra oryzae. Okay, both these refer to the same species and since Cytophilus oryzae was the first given name, it is considered to be the senior synonym and this is the one uh, used uh, by the scientists. Okay, Calandra oryzae is not considered because it is a junior synonym. I hope it is clear. Okay, so that is regarding the syn uh, what you call a synonym. Uh, another classification or another type, uh, um, uh, another uh, what you call a division of synonym is the objective synonym and the subjective synonym. Objective synonyms, it is a taxa with the same type and same rank. Subjective synonym, there is no such shared type. What does it refer to actually? Subjective synonym are based on different uh, types. That is, the naming could have, uh, like, uh, it, uh, for example, if uh, Cytophilus oryzae, uh, when Linnaeus named Cytophilus oryzae, he might have used, Linnaeus might have used a specimen. Okay, if the same specimen was used for uh, giving different names by different scientists, such kind of names are known as objective synonyms. Okay, if uh, two or more uh, specimens have been used for uh, giving more than two names, then it is referred as the subjective synonyms. Here, same type referred to the same specimen, type specimen. Okay, so that is objective synonym and the subjective synonym. Fine. Uh, Next is the principle of homonymy. Okay, a uh, principle of homonymy means one name can apply to only one taxon. Okay, here we said that one taxon can have only one name. Uh, okay, homonymy means uh, 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 one name should be used only for one taxon. Okay, or one species, for example, it should not be used for two or more species. Okay, so it will uh, otherwise it will create confusion. So when two or more taxa are distinguished from each other, they must be not be denoted by the same name. 
So same name should not be used for more than one taxa. That is what the homonymy means. Okay, what is homonym, homonyms? Homonyms are the names shared by two or more different taxa. Okay, uh, uh, for example, a kid in 1777, Forster, uh, he used uh, or pub gave the name Echidna to uh, moray eels. Eels are a group of fishes, I hope you know. Okay, uh, while in seven, later in 1797, Curia used the same name for naming spiny anteater. Okay, so what happened is, if we uh, search for Echidna, if a person is searching for Echidna, uh, uh, information regarding Echidna may come up with respect to eel as well as anteater. Anteater is a mammal, eel is a fish. So, obviously, the person who is collecting the data will get confused. Okay, so um, um, to avoid such confusions, what happened is, the first published name is considered to be the valid name. Okay, so uh, uh, this one is still being used for more eels. While the second, the kidna, the spiny and for spiny anteater has been uh, replaced by tachyglosis in 1811. Okay, so now uh, present uh, um, name for uh, um, spiny anteater is actually tachyglosis. But unfortunately, uh, from 1797 to 1811, plenty of people may have used this, this particular name for uh, uh, spiny anteaters. So even now, uh, we may find echidna uh, you being used for spiny anteater. Okay, whatever it is, this two, this is the single name is used for different taxa okay so that is what is referred as a homonyms when a single name is used for uh, naming two or more different taxa we call that those name as a homonym and the first published name is considered to be the senior homonym while the later ones are known as a junior homonym okay so that is what the principal principle of homonymy indicate okay so uh, it implies that a, a specific a particular name should be used or must be used only for a specific taxa now another naming system is known as a tautony Okay, uh, so we saw homonyms and synonyms. Now there is a totonym. Totonym refer to naming of a species, specifically the subspecies, where the generic, specific, and the spe uh, subspecific name are the same. Okay, or the specific name and the spe uh, subspecific name may be the repetition of the generic name. So in such cases, what happens? The generic name, specific name, and the spe uh, subspecific name will be the same. Okay, so one example is apis, 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 ratus, ratus, ratus. Okay, it is with the rat, uh, the scientific name of rat. So, the, such kind of names are known as totonyms. Okay, so totonyms is the name of a species or subspecies wherein the generic name is getting repeated. Okay, so uh, that is one example. So, this is with regard to International Code of Zoological Nomenclature as well as the rules of nomenclature uh, as per the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. Okay. Thank you.